guys uh toby here from stonehurst studios um hopefully a quick video on external hard drives and what you need and, and why you need them um if you're watching this video probably you know why you need an external hard drive because you've run out of space or you want to you know expand your storage capacity um if i just quickly look at my hard drive here i can i'm on a mac um i can see that uh, right click on the icon and I can find out you know the capacity of my hard drive how much space I've got available on this case in the, in my case I've got 179 gigabytes of space so I've got a reasonable amount of space but often people you know are in a situation where you don't you know you've only got 20 gig of available space and you want to buy say something like uh, native instruments um, or Spitfire audio or any of these other you know external uh, third party uh, sound libraries and you haven't got enough space to store them so what you want to be able to do is store that sound library on an external drive but also you want to be able to access your, your computer to be able to access it quickly in order to be able to load the sounds quickly often you know especially native instruments for example the you know, sound libraries the sound samples are very big and they can take a lot of time to load if if you're on an old-fashioned or an old slow drive so Ideally, what you want is at least an SSD drive, a solid state drive, as opposed to an HD drive. Now, both of these things are hard drives. They are, they, if you think of them as a filing system, a place where stuff is stored, it's just how quickly the um, information can be accessed as to is the different types. So we have an HD drive. Let me just quickly show you. So we have... Um, doo -doo -doo. So we have, um, sorry, very quickly, we have a, an HD drive here, which is relatively slow. We have a, an SSD drive, which is a solid state drive. And then we have the newer type, which is an NVMe drive. Again, it's SSD, but the transfer rate is even quicker. So if you kind of go slow, medium, medium speed, and then really fast. It is a, is a very simple way of showing it. And, and here's a little image here, it shows you kind of the, uh, the, re the the speed so this is slow medium and then as you can see NVMe is very very quick um, I will, I'm going to mainly talk about SSD today because it's probably the most cost efficient and the simplest uh, quickest way to sort of set up your system um, so what we want is in our ideal scenario I'm just going to close this down is we want our operating system. So this fella here is going to be running uh, the, com the co computer's operating system. In, the, in my case, I'm running High Sierra. Um, it's also going to run Open Logic, and I'm going to run Logic on, with it on on this drive. And then I'm going to have a separate drive, which is an S another SSD drive, which is going to have my sound library on it. And what I want to be able to happen is Logic is going to be running over here. My sound library is here and I want to be able to get the sounds off here into Logic nice and quick. So this connection needs to be quick and also the drive needs to be quick. So using an SSD drive is, is one thing. And then the cable connecting these two is really important. Now, in the old days we used to use, and we still use them, USB 2 is a, you know, most of your, if you've got a charging cable, say like uh, one of these fellas, which is, this is my lightning cable for my phone. One end is uh, USB 2, and the other end is the lightning cable, which goops, uh, camera, which goes into my phone. And this is good, you know, I plug this in the wall and charge, charge the phone that way. This is USB 2, great for charging the phone, that's fine, but very slow for data transfer because USB 2 is a slow protocol. Um, let me just quickly show you on a quick chart that I prepared earlier. So USB 2 transfers data at 480 gigabytes per second. Oh, sorry, 480 megabytes per second. USB 3 transfers at 4,800 uh, megabytes per second. As you can see, one USB 3 is 10 times, USB 3 is 10 times faster than USB 2. Where people sometimes get confused here is they see the abbreviation of 4,800 megabytes per second, which is 4.8 gigabytes per second. 4. A, a gigabyte 
is much is 10 times bigger than a megabyte so the the problem is sometimes you might see this the, these 4.8 gigabytes and 480 and think this is big it's a bigger number so it must be quicker no i'm 4.8 gigabytes is an abbreviation of 4800 so you can see this is 10 times quicker sorry to spell it out but sometimes people get confused so <coughs> Here's the sort of basic protocols of the different cables that we currently have. And um, there's others, Firewire, we've had as well. But um, these are the ones we most commonly come across now. Um, USB 2, USB 3, USB 3.1, which is also known as USB-C, Thunderbolt 2, and more commonly now with newer Macs, obviously we're getting Thunderbolt 3. So there is a bit of confusion between Thunderbolt 3 and USB-C. They're both kind of, but for the purposes of this, it can get confusing. They're both quick, okay? So 10 gigabytes per second is plenty quick enough for transfer between these two devices. So going back to my two drives, the cable that I need to connect these two needs to be at least USB 3. USB-C is fine and Thunderbolt is fine but the slowest cable I want is USB 3. And they are a little bit different. They kind of look, they look very similar to USB 2, but you can see here, they're kind of, they have the, most of the time I've, the ones I've seen have a blue insert. And you, but you can check when you buy the package, um, you can, you can find, it will say on there USB 3 or USB 2. Sorry, I thought that package had it on it. No, it didn't, it actually had it somewhere else. Um, so USB 3 is our transfer rate. I can, um, so just to clarify, they're USB 3.0 or USB-C. Um, so we want these two connected by USB 3. That way my computer can access the information really quickly from the sound library and load the sounds that I want. But it's also like having a, another person helping out on, the, on a project. So I've got like my library assistant, which is my sound drive over here, is doing some of the work. And then my hard drive is doing the other work. So it's kind of, it's making the whole system more efficient. On my studio setup, on my, I have a Mac Pro Tower, I have a third drive in use. So, which is, would be a project drive. So I have my, this drive here, which is running the operating system and logic. I have the drive in the middle, which is running my sound library. And then this drive, I actually open, I load a project in on the project drive. So this is handling the project. This is doing the sound drive, sound, and this is the, the sound library. And this is doing the, uh, running the operating system. So it's like, I've got three guys working for me, which are all doing part of the work. It just spreads the load and makes my system more efficient. There's a few other things like your your uh, processing power and your, your RAM and things like that. But just for this example, I'm just gonna, we're just talking about drives. So this is kind of your ideal setup, but if you're working on a laptop, something like that, this is perfectly adequate, having two separate drives and then having another drive just as a backup uh, to back up your systems. I um, hope that's helped. Um, and I hope I haven't confused you too much. SSD drives are the way to go um, for speed on your, drive, on, your, on your sound libraries. That's your kind of bare minimum. You can also do get NVMe drives in a sound enclosure, in an external enclosure as well, which are even faster. But um, cost can be a bit more prohibitive. I um, hope that's helped. Uh, just uh, have a great day. Um, see you.